Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to steal the color grading from an image in GIMP. This is GIMP version 2.10.12 which at the time of this tutorial is the latest version of GIMP. But of course before we get into that I want to direct you guys over to my website at DaviesMediaDesign.com. As always we have tons of GIMP help articles and video tutorials on here so definitely check that out. You can also enroll in my best-selling GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy, which now has 2,000 students, so thank you to everybody who's enrolled in this course. And you can enroll in any of my Skillshare classes by visiting GIMPschool.com. So here is the image I will be stealing the color grading from for today's tutorial. This is a free photo found on Pixabay, and you can come over here and click free download. I just went with 1280 by 1920 for this. I'll also be using this photo, which is going to be the photo where I will apply the color grading I took from the other photo. So once again, click free download and go with 1920 by 1281. So this is a great technique because it allows you to steal the colors from a photo as well as just the general mood of a photo. And this is great whenever you have a series of photos you wanna use and you want them all to have the same general look. Or if you have an aesthetic like something like Instagram and you just want all of your photos to always look the same, you can kind of apply this technique across all your photos. Of course, how close those images look like is going to depend on the lighting in all your images and the general colors found in all the images. So keep that in mind while you're using this technique. So I'll start by coming over here to File, Open Recent, and I'm going to open up our first image. And I'll just repeat that, File, Open Recent, and open up our other image that we downloaded. Of course, you guys will have to go to File, Open, and search your computer, probably your download section. So I'll just click to open that. So as you can see here, we have two images that have vastly different color gradings. So this one is going to be much brighter overall. It looks like a much happier image, I suppose. Whereas this one is maybe a bit more dramatic, it's a little bit darker. So I want to take the color grading from this image and as best I can transfer that over to our other image. The best way to start with this is we want to create a palette of the colors in this image. And I'm going to keep it simple by only creating a palette of the highlights, midtones, and shadows. So I need to reduce the total number of colors in this image down to three. And the easiest way to do that is going to be to change the color mode of my image to indexed. And don't worry, this is really easy to do. So for starters, right now, our image precision is set to 32-bit linear floating point. I actually need to reduce that down to 8-bit. So I'll come over here to Image, Precision, and I'm going to change this to 8-bit integer. And here we have Precision Conversion. I'm just going to keep everything set to the default and hit Convert. So now up here, you can see this is an 8-bit gamma integer image. And I'm going to come over here to Image, mode and now i can change the mode from rgb to indexed grayscale is going to be just black and white so i'll go with indexed and here we have the index color conversion dialog box and here you can see we can convert our number of colors in here our maximum number of colors to whatever we want so i already have this set to three the minimum you can go down to is two but here we're going to go with three and i'm going to keep all the settings the same and hit convert so now, as you can tell, our colors are broken down into the highlights, midtones, and the shadows. So now we need to create a palette from this image. And if you guys have watched my tutorial on how to create palettes, you probably already know what's going to happen here. But I do need to open up my palettes dialog or my palettes tab here. And I can do that by going to Windows, Dockable Dialogs, and I'll come down here to Palettes. So now we have all of our palettes found in GIMP, whether they are the default palettes or ones we've created in the past. And what I need to do is right click inside of here and I'm gonna go down to import palette. And under select source, I'm gonna come down here to image. And this already has our image selected. You can create a palette from the other image we have opened up. But as you can see over here in the preview, there's only three colors in this palette because we only have three colors in the image. So that's made it really easy to create this three color palette. And now I'm just gonna come down here to import. And if you come up here, you can see your imported color palette. I'm gonna change this to girl holding wheat. That way we know that this is the image we're working with. And if I double click on this, it's going to bring up my palette editor and you can see here we have our three main colors. Before I convert this palette to a gradient, I do need to come over here, right click and go to new color from foreground. That's just going to duplicate that color I was clicked on there and then I'm gonna drag it back here to the beginning. And I'll come over here and do the same for the highlight and don't worry, this will make sense in a second. So I'll just click new color from foreground 
And once again, we have this color here. So I'm just gonna drag this to the left a little bit. And so this is actually created duplicates of our colors. I don't need these two anymore. So I'm just going to click the delete option. Now you can see we have five colors and this is exactly what we need for the next step. It's actually three colors, but we have two duplicate colors here. So now I'm going to come back here to my palettes tab and here is our girl holding wheat palette. So if I right click on here and go to palette to gradient, that is going to create a gradient from our palette. So if I come down here to my gradients tab, which if you don't have this open here, you could just go to windows, dockable dialogues and click on gradients. But here we have our gradient that was created from our palette. And if I double click on this gradient, now we have the gradient editor and you can see the positioning of our colors on the gradient. And we can adjust these positions using these arrows and that is going to play a key role here in this next step. So we have all of the colors from our image, the highlights, the shadows, and the midtones. Now we need to properly assign the position of those on the gradient based on the brightness value of those colors. Again, this is going to make sense in a second, so bear with me. So what I can do is I can grab my eyedropper tool and I can choose my highlight color here, for example. And now you can see my highlight color has been added as my foreground color. And if I click this button right here, I can save this color to my color history. So I'll just click OK. And I'm going to do the same for the shadows. So here's my shadows color. And once again, I'm going to save this to my color history. Click OK. And lastly, I've got my midtones color here. So I'll click on this and just save this to my history. Click OK. So now that we have all three of our colors saved, we need to figure out the brightness of these colors so that we can assign these to our gradient. And that way the gradient will map properly to the brightness levels on the other image where we're going to transfer this color grading on. So I'll come over here and click on this and I'm gonna start with my highlight color. So if I click on the highlight color, you can see we've got RGB LCH. I'm actually going to switch over here to hue saturation and value. And value is basically the same as brightness. So we're gonna use this V value here. And right now this is set to 65.1. So what we need to do is we need to adjust our gradient here so that the brightness value, which is going to be this slider right here, this triangle, matches up to 65.1 in terms of its position right here on the gradient. So when I click and drag to move this, you'll see the handle position there will give us a number and we want this number to match up with the value number here. So I want this number to be 65.1. I'll just drag this over until we hit 65.1 or something really close to it. So 65.17 is going to be close enough. So I'll leave that right there. Don't worry, we're gonna adjust this white slider here, which is basically the midpoint of our two colors right here in our gradient. All right, so we have the value set up for the highlight value. Now we need to do the midtone value. So come over here and click on my midtone. And here you can see this is 36.1. So this needs to align to 36.1. So I'll just click and drag this. And if your midtone here or your midpoint gets in the way, you can just move it over. But I'm just going to drag this until I hit 36.1 or something close. So 36.15 is close enough. And lastly, we need to do our shadow value, which is going to be this triangle right here. So I'll come over and click on my shadow and you can see this one is set to 12 and a half. So that is what we need to set this one to and we'll probably have to move the midpoint out of the way. We'll get as close to 12 and a half as we can. 12.4 is close enough. All right, so our shadow, midtone and highlight have been aligned based on their value number. So let me just cancel out of this. We don't need it anymore. Next, what I need to do is I just need to reset the midpoints here so that these are properly aligned. So you can see right here, this segment is highlighted and I can click between all the segments here. So I'm just gonna start by clicking on this first segment, right click and go to recenter segments midpoint. That'll recenter that up. And I'm just going to go down the line and do the same. So recenter segments midpoint. And I'll do it here as well. And lastly on this one. All right, so now our gradient has been properly lined up. Now I can take this gradient and I can map it to our other image and that's going to allow us to introduce some of the colors from this first image here that we're looking at into the second image where we are transferring over that color grading. So come over here to our other image and I'm gonna come over to my layers panel and for this one, I'm going to duplicate our main image and let me just change this to beach so it's a little easier to read. And for this one, I'm going to name this beach copy. So on our beach copy layer, we wanna create a gradient map. 
So first of all, make sure you are still clicked on this girl holding wheat gradient. Then you're gonna come over to colors, map, gradient map, and that will automatically map your gradient to the colors in your image. So as you can see, because we repositioned where our highlights, midtones, and shadows were on that gradient, they've matched up pretty well here to this image, and it's made our image take on some of the coloring from this image. There's obviously a lot more highlights in this one than there are shadows, so it's gonna look a little bit different. But what I wanna do is come over here to mode, and I'm gonna change the color mode of this to soft light. And that's going to help this blend in a little bit better. So here's a before, here's an after. So it's already changing our color rating a little bit here. You can always adjust the opacity of this if you want to turn down the effect. This is only the first step in stealing or transferring the color grading from our first image over to the second image. The next step is we need to exchange some of the colors out so that they all match up a little bit better with our original image. So for example, we wanna swap out the highlight colors in this photo with the highlight colors from our other photo. And we're gonna do the same for the midtones and the shadows. And so there is a built-in tool we can use to exchange colors in GIMP. I can come over here and go to colors, map, color exchange. And so now we could choose our original color and then add the color we want to exchange it with. So I'm going to grab the eyedropper tool here and I'll hold control and zoom in and I'm going to click what I think is the highlight color in my image, which is going to be this bright color here on her skin. So I'll click on that color there and you can see that's been added as our from color. Now I'll come over here to the two color, click on that. That'll bring up my color dialog box and I can choose that highlight color we saved earlier and I'll click okay. So now it's taking this color here, the highlight skin color, and it's changing it to the highlight skin color from our other image. If I hold control and zoom out, you can see nothing has happened yet, and here's the preview option that I can check or uncheck to see what's going on. So nothing has happened yet. Let me just recenter this image up. What I need to do is I need to turn the threshold values all the way up to one. So you can see that as I do this, especially on the blue threshold, you can see the changes taking shape. So you want everything set to one. And right now this is really dark, but don't worry, it's going to be fixed here in a second. I'll click okay. So now we've swapped out the highlight colors. Next we need to swap out the midtones. So again, I'll come over here to colors, map, color exchange. So we need to do the midtones. And this is sort of the difficult part. You need to figure out which colors are the midtones. That's going to be the colors that are pretty dark, but not super dark. So not quite black, maybe like a darker brown. So I'll hold control and zoom in. And this part is really up to you. You can go with maybe this color right here or maybe the color on her belt. And we could try a couple of colors and see what it looks like. So I'll grab my eyedropper tool again. Let's go with the belt color here, which right now it's almost black. So maybe that's too dark. So let me go actually with this color right here on her arm. And I can change the two color to this midtone color that we saved from before and click OK. And now I'm going to turn all of our values up once again, and you can see that'll swap out all of our colors. I'll hold control and zoom out. And you can see now we have this sort of green tone. And if I go back to the other image, you'll notice the other image does have a little bit of green in it. So this is not totally surprising. It will get corrected a little bit when we do the shadows portion. But if you think this is too green, you can choose the from color and change that to whatever color you want. I'm just gonna stick with this color for now and click OK. So now we have the midtones swapped out. The last part is we need to swap out the shadows. So I'll come back to colors, map, color exchange. So I'm gonna hold control and zoom in. Her glasses are pretty much the darkest part of this photo. You could argue that maybe this part is. It doesn't really matter. It's up to your preference. So I'm just going to choose the eyedropper tool, hold control and zoom in and get a nice black color from her sunglasses here. I will go with this color right here. And then the two color, I'm going to change to the shadow that we selected earlier or that we saved earlier and I'll click OK. And now I'm just going to turn all of these values up again to one and I'll hold control and zoom out. So as you can see, a lot of that green has been toned down now that we've switched the shadow colors up. So here's a before, here's an after. So I'll click OK. And let me just hide that top beach copy layer, which was our gradient map. And let me just rename this to gradient map. So here's our current image. This is what our image looked like before. So as you can see, this image is a little bit darker and that allows it to look a little bit more similar to this one here. We're not quite done yet. Let me unhide the gradient map. So I'll come over here to our color exchange layer and I'm gonna change the mode of this one to soft light as well. 
And of course we can decrease the opacity and that allows us to adjust the intensity of this effect. I think that looks good around 75. So if I come down here and I shift click, you can see this is what it looked like before. And if I shift click again, here's what it looks like now. So if I open up our original photo by going to file, open recent, and here is that first photo we started with. I can compare the color grading of this so it's a lot more similar now. And again, let me shift click on this so you can see the before. Here's what the two photos look like. So not very similar at all. And then shift click, here's what it looks like now. So the color grading is a lot more similar. So once I'm finished with the color grading, I can adjust the relative brightness of this image to try to help it match the other image a little bit better if I want to. So to do that, I'll make sure I'm on my color exchange layer and I'll come over here to colors, curves, and I can adjust the shadows here and bring them up so that there's a little bit less shadows. That'll brighten this image up a bit. I don't want to overdo it because it will start to look just like the old image. So here's a before, here's an after. This can help you recover some of the details in the shadows if you lost them. On the other hand, if the image is too bright, you can bring the highlights down a little bit, but I don't really need to do that here. So here's a before, here's an after, and I'm just gonna tone this down a little bit and I'll click OK. Now that we're finished with the color grading, I can export this photo as a JPEG image. So I'll go to File, Export As, and I'll just name this Beach with New Color Grading. And you can choose the file location on your computer where you want to save this. I'll just hit Export. And I'm going to adjust the quality here. And by the way, I have .jpeg at the end of my file name here. That's why this is exporting as a JPEG. So let me actually just adjust the quality down a bit and I'll hit export and there you go. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, you can visit my website at daviesmediadesign.com. You can enroll in my best-selling GIMP 2.10 masterclass from beginner to pro photo editing on Udemy. And you can enroll in any of my Skillshare classes by visiting gimpschool.com. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.